Our call to worship is led by our lay leader, Tom. Is this on? Oh, very good. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the Lord is near. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. The night of darkness is upon us. We await in fear. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Spare your people, O Lord. Heal and prepare us for service. Let Let your love love and and healing mercies flood through us, Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to sing our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, number 395 in our hymnal. Good evening. I'm so glad to see those of you who could make it out tonight with us. So, our first reading, uh, the old, it's, a, it's an Old Testament reading. It comes from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm of my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. 
Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Amen. Amen. Our next reading is the Psalter reading. It comes from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17. It is a prayer for cleansing and pardon. Written by David. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from inequity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment? Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from the bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in the sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Amen. Amen. Do I have one more? All right, we now have an epistle reading. It comes from the 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20, no, verse 20 through chapter 6, verse 10. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake God made the one who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we entreat you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacles, no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, in great endurance, afflictions, hardships, and calamities. Beatings, imprisonments, excuse me, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, impurity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. 
with the weapons of the righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and look, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as have nothing and yet possessing everything. Amen. Amen. Our gospel reading. Our gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21 concerning almsgiving, prayer, fasting, and treasures. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites, for they mock their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting will be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Blow the trumpets in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. Our Lenten journey is not only a reflection of those things that have come to pass, but it is a time of preparation to make ourselves ready for when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ returns. The prophet Joel instructs us to gather the people and consecrate the congregation. So, as we gather here to celebrate Ash Wednesday, let us begin our Lenten journey with great zeal and urgency, knowing that the time is near. While we understand the season of Lent to be a time for inward reflection with prayer and fasting, giving alms and focusing on the word of God to grow deeper in relationship with our Lord, Paul tells us we are ambassadors for Christ and that we work together with him. We are called to be co-workers with Jesus, helping others to know him so that they too may be reconciled to God, and in having been justified by God's grace, together we will share in becoming heirs according to the hope of eternal life. My heart breaks for those who do not know Christ, 
for those who reject him and have turned their hearts away from God. If only people could hear the words of Jesus and what he is teaching us, what a different place this world would be. When we look around at all that is happening in our time, we see that all of humanity and even this planet on which we live is in crisis. We find ourselves in a real mess. Much of the harm has been done and it's been perpetrated by humanity's greed, by people's own self-serving will. How often have you heard the cliche, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? Yet in today's gospel lesson, we hear Jesus telling us, do not store up for yourself treasures on this earth, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We cannot change what has already happened. There is no turning back. We can only move forward striving for justice, striving for peace, striving to work together for the common good of all and in honoring God's good creation through trying to be good stewards of this planet. Wisdom from Proverbs 21:15 tells us, when justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but dismay to evildoers. And as co-workers with Christ, we are called to seek justice. But we cannot fix the brokenness of this world all on our own. We need God. The world needs God. If we are truly ambassadors for Christ, then it's our job to spread the good news and to encourage people to pray to the one who was, who is, and who is to come. The psalmist reminds us, the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. And I believe that sometimes people must reach their point of such brokenness in their lives where there is no place to turn to but God. It is in that moment when they realize that they actually and earnestly seek God's mercy, seek repentance, crying out to God for help. Is our world not already at that point? Is it not time for all of us to seek God's mercy for restoration of our own hearts and restoration of this world? Christ calls us to repent and seek forgiveness for the harm we have done to one another. We can begin by working toward healing the brokenness in our own relationships, making amends for our own transgressions, and forgiving those who have caused us harm. In recent weeks, we heard Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, in which he told us, when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gifts. As we begin our Lenten journey, let us also seek God's forgiveness and be like Jesus who asked for forgiveness for others while he hung upon the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Let us go to our rooms and pray. Pray in private, lifting our prayers to the one who truly sees us and knows the secrets of our hearts. Let us take time to fast so that we place our focus on the Lord, putting aside for a while our earthly desires. And let us give alms, not boasting of what we did, but knowing that God will use the gifts offered to spread equity among his people. 
during this time of Lent, let us gather frequently as a congregation to worship and to pray together, to strengthen one another in faith and to support the needs of each other. Let us truly be united in Jesus Christ for the kingdom is already at hand and the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. For we do not know the time nor the day when we will leave this earthly plane. Ash Wednesday is a somber reminder of our own mortality in hearing the words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. When we recall that God made us, mingling his own divine breath, his spirit into our dust from which we were formed, our egos don't seem as big anymore, do they? Today helps us to recognize that we have been put here on this wor world, but for a finite period. Time is short, shorter than we think. So may we see the urgency of making things right with God and with one another. Let us spend these next 40 days in grateful praise of God who formed us, breathing the breath of life into our mortal bodies. For without God, there would be no life. May we turn our hearts to the Lord where our true treasure lies and do what God desires of us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Let us seek him wholeheartedly and let our journey begin. Amen. This evening, in just a little bit, we'll be inviting you up to come. We have three stations. First, come here. Everybody, please come up the side aisle. Come to this table. Touch the sand. Let it flow through your fingers like the time, like the way the sand flows through an hourglass. Meditate. Read the words. Next, you'll come and you'll be receiving ashes. Then go to this table, read the scripture verses, touch the water, remember your baptism, and be thankful. Then I would ask that you exit down the side aisle there to return to your seats. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40 day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts of faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make right beginning of repentance as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow before our Creator and Redeemer in prayer. Let us take a moment for silent reflection.
Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you to come forward. We're going to start with faith. And our confession and pardon is found in your bulletin. <clears throat> we confess our sins and receive forgiveness with the assurance of God's love and grace through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit purify our hearts, transform our minds, and renew our lives inspiring us to live as people who are forgiven because we are forgiven. May these ashes be a sign of our repentance and the symbol of God's grace, our hope for life, renewed and eternal. May God raise us from the ashes of our lives, empowering us to find new life and new hopes as we journey toward the cross during this Lenten season. Amen. Amen. Our Lord and Savior gave us the words, taught us to pray. So let us in unison lift our voices in prayer to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 269, found in your hymnal. Invite you to rise in body or in spirit.